So we're given two curves, y equals ln x, y equals x minus 2. The area in between them is the region that we'll be first finding an area for, and then using that area to create some volumes. So I'm going to include uh, these formulas that relate to area between curves and volumes. And let's go ahead and start part A. But, you know, before I do that, I'm going to add in, for these later parts, these later problems, we're going to need to calculate volumes of revolution. And since I'm not great at drawing them, I'm going to add those right in at the start. Okay, so the area first. Well, we have area between curves here. And the area between curves, we have to divide this region up into infinitesimally thin rectangles. Since the functions themselves are given in terms of x, there's no real reason not to use vertical rectangles, though we obviously could uh, work with horizontal rectangles as well, but it would just be a little more complicated. Our thickness, therefore, is dx, and that tells us that we're integrating with respect to dx. So now we simply have to identify two things. First, the greater and the lesser curve. And the greater curve here is going to be ln x. And the lesser curve is the x minus 2. So I'll just write minus x plus 2 because we have to distribute the minus sign over this x minus 2. Now, also challenging is the fact that we have to find the two points of intersection, which I'm going to call A and B. So, um, we're going to find uh, intersections numerically. Okay. A. Let's go ahead and I've got these functions placed in the calculator already. So let's use the intersect. So that's fine for our first and second curve. The guess down there is just fine. We get 0.1586. And just for good measure, I'm going to store that. So you just say x is stored in alpha a, 0.1586. Go ahead and put that in. And let's see what we get for b. We'll do the intersect again, but this time we'll indicate a different location as our initial guess. That's fine for the first curve, that's fine for the second curve, but we're going to go with uh, 3 as our guess for x, and we get 3.1462. Again, I'm going to store that in B. but I don't have to re-look uh, for that value, 3.1462. Okay, and so now we can evaluate this numerically. And let's go back using the calculator. We use our FNINT function. And we want to go from, let's recall the value for A. From A to recall the value for B. From A to B. Our function is y1 minus y2.
and we're integrating with respect to x. What do we finally get? 1.9491. And again, for good measure, we may as well store that in C. One point nine four nine one. Okay, now we move to part B. This is going to be a volume of revolution problem. We're going to rotate about the horizontal line y equals negative 3. And again, I have pre-drawn this volume. This is our line y equals negative 3 that we're rotating around. And I knew that that was below this intersection point, and that's why I have this sort of figure where that's dotted in, and this sort of figure. And what I have to see is that this is going to be a carve-out problem, namely, uh, or in other words, a washer-type problem, because I have both an outer and an inner radius. Okay, So I've pre-drawn those as well. Let's see if we can't get them in here. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing this volume minus this volume. So what we have is the integral from A to B dx minus a second integral from A to B dx. And this is pi r squared of x minus pi r squared of x, where the respective r's are these outer and inner radii. Okay, so this line y equals negative 3, this outer radius has to be this distance here. What is capital R of x? It's going to be the ln x function minus negative 3. So that's ln x plus 3. What is this little r function going to be? It's going to be the inner line. That's what this is. Okay minus that y equals negative 3. So in this case, it'll be x minus 2 minus negative 3. x minus 2 plus 3 or x plus 1. Okay. So I can also put this in the calculator. Again, we're using my stored values for A and B and uh, expressing capital R and little r in terms of a Y1 and Y2. Okay, we need to calculate an integral, so we're going to use FNINT. And our start point is going to be A, which we don't have to enter manually again because we stored that value. And our stop point will be B, which we also entered in. Okay, now what about our functions? Well, the first one is pi times r squared, capital R squared. I'm just going to leave the pi out of this calculation and multiply by it at the very end. So let's just express a capital R squared. And we decided that was ln x plus 
plus 3. So I'll put that in as a y1 plus 3. And we can close that parenthesis and square the whole thing. And now we have to do the other integral, which for convenience sake I'm just doing uh, inside here. But it's important, very important, that we keep the, this radius squared separate from the smaller radius squared. So that smaller radius squared is y2. Uh, plus 3. Again, I say plus 3. What we're really saying is minus the line y equals negative 3. And we've got that, and that's also squared. And the whole thing is done with respect to x. So we're going to get a result for this, and then we'll be multiplying that result times pi. because we pulled the pi out front. 34.1986. Okay, let's move on to part C. And again, I've pre-drawn this. Now we're rotating around the y-axis. And that means that what formerly was the outer part over here, namely the y equals ln x function, now is the inner curve. This is also going to be a carve-out problem, but in this case we're carving out the ln x function. Okay. So we're going to say that the volume equals pi. Now what about the a to b? Well we're now integrating with respect to y. Why did I know that? Because this is the thickness of the disk. So we have to go from the y value to the y value. But it's very convenient to notice that since y equals x value minus 2, we can just write our y values as a minus 2 and b minus 2. What about the functions themselves? Well, the ln x function we have to write the x part, okay, we have to write this x distance, okay, but as a function of y. So that's going to be e to the y. Oops. I just realized that's not what we want. So let's be careful here. I guess you get to see me make a mistake. Well, I owe you a dollar. Um, let's go back. We're looking at this as our greater outer curve and this as our lesser inner curve. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and write this as capital R squared Y minus pi times a minus 2 to b minus 2 little r squared y dy. Okay, so let's be a little more careful this time. What is our capital R? It's the distance from here to here. We have to express this distance, which is the x value, we have to rewrite in terms of y. And so we have x equals y plus 2. And this distance, which is our little r, is 
is the distance x, but we have to write it in terms of y. So since y was ln x, x is e to the y. There we go.